Well, hello and welcome to another week of Soap Secrets. Now, we're going to be talking about the hospital drama, starting with Casualty. And Claire Ruck is joining me today. Hi, Claire. Hi, Hannah. Right, now, Stevie and Faith go out clubbing again, but they're pretty good drinkers, aren't they? Those two, they, they do <laughs> drink. I tell you, I've seen them, they just down gin and tonic, so I don't know about you, but that will make me drunk what's very it, quickly. It, what do they call gin? The mother's ruin? Mother's ruin, yeah. yes. Yeah, can make you very sad, I believe. Yes, yes. <laughs> so they are sitting there all socially distanced because that's I love it. They're in a club, and but because like this is casualty, they are slightly socially distanced. So there's just two of them at a table, and uh, Stevie is playing the sensible one. And we know Hannah, don't we, that Stevie so isn't the sensible one. And um, this is very interesting. Faith goes up to the bar to get another round, and she's clutching her phone like um, like some people do. I don't clutch mine quite in the same way. And she puts it down on the bar, picks the drinks up, and accidentally forgets to pick it up. And this guy um, calls her back. His, his name's Angus, and he says, "Hey, you know, you forgot your phone." And then he holds her, her phone up to it. It's a modern one. It's got face recognition. So. It opens and he inputs, cheekily inputs, his details, his phone number into her phone, Hannah. Mm. So Not she. Good. <laughs> I think he's a bit of a player myself. He looks very predatory. Um, anyway, uh, he gives her a phone back and she goes back to Stevie. And her and Stevie have this big conversation, and Stevie's being really sensible and says, You know, you're still not over Lev. And. and you know, and Faith says, well, you know, yes, I am. And Steve says, I don't think you are. So when Stevie goes up to get another round, Faith goes over to this Angus and she says, hey, shall we get out of here? And she takes him home. Uh oh, don't tell me. He's not going to be the nice knight in shining armour, is he? Well, you have to tune in to find out, mm. Hannah, but um, he's got issues, she's got issues. And he is a bit predatory, and I think she picked the wrong guy to take home. Uh-oh. Well, of course she did. It's a soap, Claire. <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> um, and uh, that's not the only sort of perhaps nasty person we see this week, or a not very nice side of somebody, because Ethan uh, shows a sort of a... Well, just not a very nice side of him, doesn't he? Yes, I was really disappointed in Ethan this week, Hannah, and I'm sure you will be. I know he's been through a lot. You know, we remember, um, you know, on his wedding day to Phoenicia, she died in that awful train wreck um, and uh, left him alone with his their son, Bodhi. He wasn't coping at all with her, with her death. And late one night, um, about four months ago, he just, he just turned up at her parents, Penn and Ashley, and dumped his son with them and says, you have to take care of him. Mm. I can't, I can't. And just was having this major breakdown. He lit in the middle of the night without any, you know, they stood there shocked. They tried to talk him around and say, no, 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 we can support you. He's your son. And he refused. And so Penn and Ashley have been bringing up little Bodie. You know, this is a time in their lives when perhaps they might have wanted to enjoy retirement. They've, they've given their all to their daughter's lovely, lovely son. Mm. So this this week, um, Penn and Ashley bring little Bodie into ED because he has a bit of a temperature. So, and um, Matthew is treating him. So we know that, you know, Matthew used to be engaged to Phoenicia and then he was trying to uh, steal her away from Ethan. So the two of them don't really get on, do they, Han? No, they don't. Not at all. So he goes off pop a little. He goes off pop more than a little. And, um, you know, he talks to Rash, and I think Rash should really have minded his own business here. And Rash says, well, if you, you know, he says, oh, Bodhi doesn't recognise me, I want to be more part of his life. Um, and Rash says, well, if you want to be more part of his life, tell them you would like to be more part of his life. Um, but he doesn't actually say, I would like to be more part of his life. He says, I want my son back there and then. It's such a, the thing is, he's made a rash decision in the first instance um but perhaps for the best for the for the child because he's yeah. not in a good place but just shoving the child from one i mean that inconsistency and lack of continuity for a child is really hard they kind of yeah. need to work it out together don't they because he should yes. be active in his son's life and if he can have him he should have him but there's a way of doing that 
Yes, completely. And this isn't. Certainly not in the middle of ED. No. Yeah, he hasn't thought thought things through. This causes, uh, you know, Penn and Ashley enormous distress because Ashley is in bits. She's She's been the one there nursing little Bodie through his illnesses, through his earaches, mm. changing his nappies, you know, all that stuff, hasn't she? And yeah. just to have him ripped from her, just like that, Penn's upset because he's also missing his grandson, but... He's upset that Ashley is is being put through all this. Mm, mm. So yeah, absolutely, I think you you become very protective of your partner in situations yeah. like that, and the hurt that it causes. Because is Ethan in the right place to have, you know, his child yes. back with him? And that's the big question, yeah. isn't it? What has Ethan done? I mean, he certainly hasn't thought it through because he's in the middle of a, a shift in ED. He has nothing at home. No, no nappies. No baby food nothing and he's no. just ripped his son from and of course there'll be nothing in place to babysitting you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing in place to make this a legal agree- yeah. agreement between them yeah. and no one wants to go down that no. road it's just sad that he's just he is still massively in this grieving yeah. process i think yeah right so it's all happening in casualty is it all happening in holby i'd imagine so because we are you know we're heading towards the end aren't we yes um now you didn't give something away last week, did you? Because you wanted me to see it on screen. I know. I know. It's so awful. It's so sad. I know. So Jack's brain tumour is terminal. So. I suppose at this point, losing a character is not the end of the world because it's coming to an end anyway. Yeah. But it is the end of the world for Holby lovers and Jack lovers. Yes. Yes. So she's got... Um, her, the protein beam therapy didn't work for her, but for Amelia, Eli's wife, her, her brain tumour has actually shrunk, so there is some good news. So Amelia's brain tumour has shrunk by just under 30% with protein beam, but Jax hasn't, and and uh, she's in complete turmoil over this, complete turmoil. I think she really thought the protein beam therapy would work mm, mm. and and it has obviously for Amelia but it hasn't for Jack so yes it's, it's thrown the whole of um the whole the whole of the team into into uproar really because well and Jack is such a you know constant big part of the show yeah she is you know she... but really difficult so do we have any idea of a timeline here? Or I suppose we know the end of the timeline for the show, so this is going to come to a head, I suppose. Yes, I would imagine it's going to come to a head at some point because, yes, we've only got till, you know, March time. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's very, very and sad. And there's, there's another storyline about a child here. I find these very upsetting, these storylines, but I guess they, you know, they are important things to shine a spotlight on because it happens to so many people. But Nikki's still not bonding with Julia and this week we see her dropping Julia off at the creche but without her baby bag yes um but the nursery can't get a hold of her to get the baby bag and she actually has a temperature so it's kind of it's now the bonding is sort of I mean it's an accident you know things happen she might not be near her phone whatever but they're sort of highlighting a bit of concern around duty of care perhaps so yes yeah, so so here we we see this is the week i think we see how bad nikki nikki and her relationship with her daughter juliet is i mm. think i think we have to remember that juliet's father was cameron the serial killer and i think perhaps when every time nikki looks at juliet she sees the serial killer mm. cameron i mean nikki had a, a you know a a, a relationship with him it, 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 he didn't attack her or anything but she mustn't she must worry about mm. stuff when you when you, the father of your baby is a killer she was so i think that's causing her some distress and she there's just nothing there there's just no emotional attachment so yeah so she drops juliet juliet off at the crash um without saying goodbye she doesn't fuss over you know give her big, wet, sloppy kisses she and tickle her tummy. She doesn't do anything. She just hands mm. her off to the creche. And, yeah, there's, there's no baby bag. There's nothing. And she's teething, so she has a little bit of a temperature. So the creche then come looking for her. And we see her literally declining the creche's phone call with her mm. phone. And it's not once, but several times. So, finally, the creche catch up with her because, they've you know, they she's got to be somewhere in the hospital and they keep keep 
asking her colleagues and finally they catch up with him. They demand that she takes her daughter home because she's ill and she's also upsetting the rest of the babies and toddlers. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's what Nikki has to do. But what we see is she pops Juliet in her car seat in the car and she's still crying. Nikki gets into the front, obviously, to drive her home and she turns the radio up, first of all, to drown the baby out. I can't watch stuff like this. It really upsets and me. And it doesn't quite work because at this point she's screaming quite a lot and Nikki can't drive anywhere and she gets out of the car and she she is found by Amelia sitting under a tree in a lot of distress with the baby still in the car. Mm. Where is this going to end? Yeah. She is in a lot of... There is, you know, this, she needs help. She, she needs help, you know, and that's the reality. And lots of mums do. It's it's not a judging yeah. situation at all. It's just you know really hard to watch. Um, and will Hanson and Russ's fledgling free thought <laughs> end this week? <laughs> well, poor Hanson's in a very difficult position because Russ's daughter, teenage daughter, pitches up at the hospital and she lies to her dad about about, about doing um doing some interviews with um high powered women in the hospital. Um mm. but what she hasn't told her dad, Russ, is that she's heavily pregnant. She is quite round, so she looks to be about six, seven months pregnant. Um and with big jumpers she can she's hidden her pregnancy from her dad. But um, Hanson spots her late and goes up to say hello. But as she bends down, he sees quite clearly, since he is a doctor, that she is heavily pregnant. And mm. um, Billy asks Hanson not to tell her dad. What will Hanson do? This puts him in a very awkward position. Yeah, very difficult position. And um, Michael Greco, still guesting yes. this week. Yes. Um, but his son Harry's heart operation is cancelled. Um, is it for the third time? Yes, this time. So, yes, so um, he came in last week, um, and this week, by the time we catch up with him this week, his heart operation for his heart murmur has been cancelled for a third time. He's blacking out, he, he, you know, and Fletch is getting very, very upset. You know, Fletch is mm. a really great nurse. He's, you know, invested in everyone. He's really, you know, really tried to calm Harry down because he was a bit nervous about everything. You would be, wouldn't mm. you, when you're a teenager? And he wants to do right by him. So he manages to get a team together for Harry's op. But it's snatched away from him because another patient comes in who is more urgent. I mean, this is so like real life, isn't yeah. it? I mean, this is just what happened. Yeah. It was the most frustrating thing. It's like, you know, you're first on the uh, list today, madam. And then when you get there, you don't even get seen. Yeah. because there's a, I mean, of course, priorities come in. But, you know, this is a, this is a child, you know, it's very yeah, difficult. It is. So Fletch gets very angry, has a massive fight with Jack. And he arranges for Harry to be treated at St James's, which is their rival hospital. Mm. But, um, you know, obviously he has to be taken there by ambulance. So... Uh, so Fletch accompanies Harry and his dad, Anthony, played by Michael Greco. Um, but in the ambulance, stuck in traffic, he goes into arrest. Can Fletch save him? You, please don't tell me he dies. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anything, but you might need some tissues. I can't bear it. There's too many children's storylines. You know how I feel about these, Claire. Can you make them stop, please? <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is very dark this week, I think, in Holby. And um, mm. they are talking a lot about the state of the NHS. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's topical, isn't yeah. it? And it's probably the right thing to do. And, you know, the reality is that it's mimicking reality. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's still hard to watch. Yes. Well, on that happy note, <laughs> we will be net back next week to talk about the soaps, uh, well, the hospital soaps, and um, hopefully Claire will bring us some jolly news, but I can't promise that. <laughs> Until next week, have a good one. Bye.